How's it going everyone, Vlad here with SolusPLC.com and today I want to talk about cross-referencing. Cross-referencing is a very, very important practice in PLC programming and it's typically available in every single platform. That being said, it is very powerful in allowing you to troubleshoot your PLC programs, figuring out where certain tags are coming from and ultimately determining the logic that drives certain functions of your program. Without any further delay, let's get started. So what I have in front of you is basic logic that we use to create a batching system. If you're interested in checking this out, it's available on solusplc.com. That being said, to get started in cross-referencing, and if you're looking at a new program, you want to figure out what exactly is our program doing. So what I'm looking at is the first or the zeroth rung in the control scheme. And so the first thing that comes to mind is the batch start. So I can right click this and then I can scroll down to go to cross reference for that specific tag. And if I click this, you'll notice that there's going to be an XIC instruction and an OT instruction. The first thing that you need to pay attention to is location, routine, but also destructive. So destructive is a very interesting ta uh, tab because destructive will tell you if this rung or this utilization of this boolean is going to be able to change it or it's going to just look at, to be looking at the state and based on the instructions if you're familiar with plc programming you know that an xic is just going to look at the state of the boolean while an ot can change it from zero to one and vice versa so of course if we want to understand how this boolean is being driven we need to go to the ot so i'm going to double click this and you'll notice that within Studio 5000, it's going to select the instruction where this is being used. And so based on the logic written here, so very simple rung, it's just an XIC leading to an OTE. I noticed that this is labeled as HMI batch start push button. So immediately I can tell that on the previous rung, when somebody presses an HMI push button, this is going to energize this batch start. And ultimately this is going to get our batch to run. Now, the next button that we want to look at is batch stop. Right now, I don't know if it's driven from a physical button, if it's driven from the HMI. I can definitely see that it's right here in the logic, but it could be elsewhere. So let's right click the same way as we had done before, go to cross reference, and you see that there's going to be multiple places it is used in. Again, we pay attention to the instruction. We also pay attention to the destructive and we can double click on the OT, which brings us to exactly where we had seen it. Again, this could be a lot more complex. This could be utilized in many different ways, but this is what we've got. Followed by the stop, we've got the tank full Boolean. So once again, someone who's looking at this program for the first time could perhaps ask the question, what does it mean for the tank to be full? Is it coming from a sensor? Is it coming from a digital input? Is it coming from an analog input? Is it something set on the HMI? So we can right click this, go to cross reference, and you'll notice once again, a very simple set of instruction. Let's go to the OT and try to figure it out. So here we got a slightly, slightly more complex rung, and this is where cross referencing really shines. So at this point, we already know what batch running is. If we scroll all the way up, it's the XI, it's the OT instruction that's all the way at the top. So once the batch has been started, the batch is now running. Now we're looking at the tank current weight and we have some kind of a compute function. So next we need to understand we're adding these batch dent zero, batch dent one, batch dent two, and it's storing it in batch dent three. Now, Based on our knowledge of PLC programming, a compute instruction is not going to do any comparison or not allow this to go through, but this greater than value will. So what we need to understand is that the sum of these three values, if it's greater than 10,000, it's going to indicate a tank full condition. Now, we need to figure out what are these batch dent 0, batch dent 1, and batch dent 2. And in this case, it's going to be a little bit tricky because a compute instruction doesn't easily allow you to reference, but we can also we can still right click and go to batch dent 0 this way. And as you can see, there's going to be a lot more instructions. And this is where, as I mentioned a couple of times, the destructive tab really shines because you may have again, up to 50, 200 and, and more instructions listed here. But what you can sort this by is 
destructive, right? And so we know that this move and this add instruction are going to impact the value inside of batch dent zero. And so that's how we can go to this location and figure out what's going on. So here we are moving a zero into batch dent zero. And this tells me immediately that we're doing some kind of a reset it's not necessarily going to move a bigger value. So this cannot be a sensor. This could not be some kind of a valve or a reference. Now, if we go into add, we'll notice that if the valve is open, there's going to be some kind of a timer. When the timer is done, it's going to add a one into that batch, then zero. So immediately I can tell you that when the valve is open, there's going to be some kind of a timer. And I want to explain this logic. It's just a simulation that I had to do on the PLC. There is absolutely no sensor in this simulation environment. And so that's how this is being written. Now, we've managed to get this far by using the cross reference function. And once again, if we go back to control, if we scroll up to where we were, we can now look at batch dent one. So what is this batch dent one? We can cross reference this. Once again, we've got this add and move instruction. So there's going to be an add just like the one we had seen. And batched in two, I would assume is exactly the same. Now, what about this batched in four? So when the tank exceeds a total of 10,000, the tank is indicated to be full. Is this batched in four a integer that's being changed anywhere else? So I can right click, go to cross reference, and you'll notice that it's only used in this greater than destructive instruction. So this is very important because this means to me that it can either only be changed by the programmer. So for example, if I type in 8,000 and press enter, this set point is going to be my new value at which point the tank is full. Likewise, this can also come from an HMI set point. So for example, if I'm setting this tag on my HMI screen, an operator could come in and type in 6,000 or whatever value they desire, and that's going to be the new, new limit. I ultimately don't know if that's the case, but I can definitely tell you that it's not changed anywhere else in the program because of the cross-reference. In any case, I highly recommend that you play with this feature, that you understand it, and that you are ready to work with it while you are connected to a real live PLC. And that's all I have for you today, and I'll see you next time.